Understanding the differences between controlled and uncontrolled airspace is essential for every pilot. Today, we're going to break it down so you can fly safely and confidently in any type of airspace. What's the overall difference? Controlled airspace is like a managed highway with traffic lights, stop signs, and speed limits. Here you have air traffic control guiding the flow of traffic ensuring everyone knows what's happening around them. In these areas, pilots must communicate with ATC and follow specific instructions, like altitude assignments, flight paths, and speed restrictions. Uncontrolled airspace, on the other hand, is more like a back road. There's no direct ATC service, and while there are rules to follow, you have more freedom to navigate independently. The responsibility for traffic separation falls squarely on the pilot. Now that we know the basic difference, let's break down each category a bit more. In controlled airspace, ATC provides separation services to ensure aircraft maintain safe distances from one another. This includes guidance on flight paths, altitudes, and clearances for takeoff and landing. Controlled airspace is divided into several different classes, class A, B, C, D, and E. In these areas, you'll need to communicate with ATC, especially before entering the airspace you'll likely require clearance to operate. Instrument flight rules, or IFR, are the standard, but visual flight rules, or VFR, can also apply in lower classes like B, C, and D. ATC is actively involved in managing traffic in these spaces, keeping everyone safe and ensuring orderly flow. In uncontrolled airspace, typically found in more remote and less congested areas, there's no ATC monitoring traffic. It's up to you, the pilot, to manage your flight safely by keeping a lookout, following established procedures, and maintaining proper separation from other aircraft. You may also hear this called see and avoid. This type of airspace is usually classified as Class G, the wild west of the skies. Here, communication with ATC is not required, but you should still monitor local frequencies to enhance situational awareness. Pilots must follow basic VFR rules to ensure safety. Now here's where it gets interesting. Flight rules differ depending on whether it's day or night in uncontrolled airspace. During daylight hours, the visibility requirements are more relaxed. You only need one statue mile visibility and you must stay clear of clouds. This makes daytime flying in Class G airspace relatively simple. At night, the visibility requirements tighten up for safety reasons. You'll need a minimum of three statue miles of visibility and must remain at least 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 horizontally from clouds. This ensures that you have plenty of space to avoid obstacles and other aircraft in the dark. Now let's talk about the subclasses under controlled airspace and how they differ. Class A. This is the upper echelon of controlled airspace, reserved exclusively for IFR flights. You're flying high above most other traffic here and it's entirely managed by ATC. No VFR flights are allowed, and you'll always need a clearance to operate. Class B. Think of Class B airspace as the airspace surrounding major international airports like LAX or JFK. It's highly regulated, and ATC provides separation services in both IFR and VFR traffic. You'll need clearance before entering, and the airspace can extend quite high and wide. Class C. Class C airspace surrounds medium to large airports. ATC provides separation services for both IFR and VFR aircraft, but the area is usually smaller and less busy than Class B. You'll need to establish radio communication with ATC, but a full clearance isn't always required for entry. Class D. Class D airspace typically surrounds smaller airports with controlled towers. It's limited in size and doesn't extend very high. You need to establish two-way radio communication with the control tower before entering, but once you do, it's relatively simple to operate in this airspace. Class E. This is the most extensive class of controlled airspace and it serves as a transitional zone between uncontrolled and fully controlled airspaces. It begins either at the surface or at a higher altitude, depending on location, and continues up to Class A airspace. VFR operations don't require radio communication with ATC here, but IFR flights are managed by ATC. Controlled airspace is managed by ATC, where communication and clearances are typically required. Uncontrolled airspace is all about pilot self-management, with more freedom, but also more responsibility. During the day in uncontrolled airspace, VFR rules are more relaxed, but at night, stricter visibility and cloud clearance requirements are in place. Class A, B, C, D, and E each have different levels of ATC involvement, but the common theme is safety and maintaining order in busier parts of the sky. So there you have it. By knowing the rules and understanding the differences between these airspace types, you'll be better prepared to navigate the skies safely. Remember to stay vigilant, communicate when necessary, and always respect the regulations of the airspace you're flying through. 
Any questions before we wrap up? Anybody? Anybody? All right. <laughs>